Now let us take up another interesting model which was proposed by Sommerfeld which is an extension of Bose theory. In order to explain the fine structure of the hydrogen spectrum, Arnold Sommerfeld proposed that electrons revolve around the nucleus in elliptical orbits but not in the circular orbits. Now what is an ellipse? Let us now look at an ellipse here. You can see there are two axes in an ellipse A, B and C, D. From here you can observe that the length of A, B is greater than the length of C, D. Hence A, B is said to be the major axis and C, D is said to be the minor axis. The electron traveling in elliptical orbit has two degrees of freedom. The first one distance from the nucleus and the second one is angular position. This causes an electron to possess angular momentum. He also says that angular momentum of an electron is quantized. It can be given as mvr is equal to k multiplied by h by 2 pi where k is an integer and is called the azimuthal quantum number. It has been proved by the methods of classical dynamics that the ratio of the principal quantum number to the azimuthal quantum number is equal to the ratio of the length of major axis to the length of minor axis of the elliptical orbit in which the electron is moving. Mathematically it can be shown as such n by k is equal to length of major axis divided by length of minor axis. The principal quantum number n denotes the length of major axis. The azimuthal quantum number k determines the length of minor axis or also the eccentricity of the orbit. Both n and k are integers. The values of k for a given value n may have total of n values like n, n minus 1, n minus 2 and so on up to 1. But k cannot take 0 as its value. Why is it so? Because if k is equal to 0, then the length of minor axis would be 0. The elliptical orbit would be reduced to a straight line passing through the nucleus of the atom. If electron is a particle moving in a definite path, then this linear motion is not possible at all. On the other hand, what happens when n is equal to k? Yes, the orbit becomes circular. But for other values of k, orbits are elliptical. The smaller the value of k for any n, the greater is the eccentricity of the elliptical orbit and thus it penetrates more deeply into the core of the atom. Let's look at this animation for bohr sommerfeld orbits for different values of n and k. Let us now look at the variation of the ellipticity with the variables of k for a given value of n. When n is equal to 4 and k is also equal to 4, then n is equal to k the elliptical orbit becomes circular. But when n is equal to 4, k can vary from 4 to 1. As the k value decreases, the ellipticity increases. You can see here. But k cannot be 0. In that case, the minor axis would be 0 and the electron should pass through the nucleus. Thus, the number of possible values of k is equal to the principal quantum number n. Here you can see there are four elliptical orbits for n is equal to 
फोर दस समर्फिल्ड मॉडल कुछ से दैट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वैल्यूज ऑफ के फॉर एनी एन विल बी न्यूमरिकली इक्वल टू एन बट कुडेंट जस्टिफाई वाई के शुड नॉट बी जीरो बट लेटर स्टडीज बेस्ड ऑन द वेव मैकेनिक्स as well as the experimental evidence showed that the azimuthal quantum number begins with zero therefore a given value of n the values of azimuthal quantum number should be zero 1 2 so on up to n minus 1 making a total of how many n possible values so now you may be confused as to which values should be considered and how this different concept should be represented so to avoid confusion the new azimuthal quantum number is given the symbol l but we can't forget k so k and l are related by the expression l is equal to k minus 1 could this explain the fine spectrum yes somerville concluded that energy of electron depends not only on the principal quantum number n but to some extent depends on the azimuthal quantum number l as well hence an electron transition from one energy level to another level can be slightly different depending on the value of l this results in closely spaced lines in the spectrum which is called as fine spectrum